After a lot of research, I decided to go with the Aeromotive Phantom 340 kit. That's what you see here. Uh, normally aspirated, the 340 pump is rated for about 800 horsepower. And on my setup, I'm gonna be around 630, so a little bit of headroom uh, for insurance purposes, but it's a great kit. Um, we're gonna install it uh, right now. So I'm just trying to figure out what I'm gonna do here and how I'm gonna mount this setup here. Uh, and here's currently what I've come up with. So uh, on the, again, the factory tank, this is where the filler nozzle comes from the, call it the fender, to fill the tank. This is the fuel level gauge sending unit that will go here. And then I'm thinking of mounting the fuel pump hanger. This is an in-tank kit. I'm thinking of mounting it right here where this spot is. I took some measurements and there's about, as you can see, it's angled here. It's taller on this side than it is on this side. Um, but there's about an inch of clearance there and then more like an inch and a half as you get towards the back. Uh, so I think this is where I'm gonna hang this. Here is the, the hanger unit. And you can see it's pretty narrow. The tallest side is where the outlet vent and return lines go. And this is about uh, three quarters of an inch tall. And then the back, that's only about, I don't know, three sixteenths or so. Uh, thick. So I, that should fit right up under there. Perfect. And give me plenty of space because what I'll do is I'll mount the fitting sides towards the back of the tank where I have extra clearance and then where it's tight there's plenty, there'll be plenty of room there. I'll have more than half an inch of clearance there. And then this bladder system goes in the tank. The sponge soaks up fuel and then there's a bag at the bottom that keeps fuel uh, loaded in there. And I've actually bought some one-way valves for all these holes so that uh, fuel can only go in and it can't slosh out. So let me see if I can get some video of what the inside of this tank looks like. So the first thing you'll see is that, that uh, fuel supply line, that's plumbed to the exterior right here. And that line then goes over to, see if I can get this camera, it feeds into that surge tank. So the idea being that there's always a constant supply of fuel in that little uh, sump tank area. And on the right and the left, towards the bottom of the tank, those are one-way valves. So again, fuel can go in, not out. So as the tank level gets low, there's a constant supply of fuel in there. Now that little tank is about four inches wide. And so I think what I'm gonna have to do first, I'm gonna have to cut, reach my hand in there and cut that little supply tube so that the uh, sponge, um, unit can go sit all the way at the bottom of the tank, the fuel tank. But other than that, I think it will clear. So I measured uh, about four inches from the edge of the tank there. So I should be able to, in fact, I can slide this over even more. I could definitely Drill that hole and have some clearance there for that uh, sponge system without interfering anything. And then again, just cut that uh, supply tube down so that uh, the unit can sit at the very bottom of the tank. So I think that's my plan. Now here's an adapter that you use to mark the holes, to drill the holes into the tank. You'll notice the edge is beveled. So what you do is you put this on the tank and then when you're working this unit in, you can squeeze it, squeeze it together, shrink it down with your hands and force it in the hole and it won't cut 
on the edges of the sharp aluminum hole that I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut. So I tried this out. I actually, actually fit my hand in there um, about, I don't know, two or three inches up my arm. So I think I could actually fit my hand once that three and a quarter inch hole is drilled. I think I could actually fit my hand in the tank to just trim that, that line that's, that's in there that I showed you. Uh, right down there. I think I can actually fit my hand in there to do that. So we will see. That is the plan. quarter inches. I only had a three inch hole saw out of this whole set, three inch or three and a half. So I did three inch and then as you saw, I used the, the grinding bit to just get the, open up that hole a little bit more. So it fits perfect right in there. Space on the side, it's good. And let's take a look inside this. So there's the uh, fuel sump. Anti-slosh sump. So the idea is my setup's gonna just drop right in here, right next to that sump. And I'm just gonna have to cut this tube Cut it there and then yeah, just down over there. Cut about eight inches off from it. Just so uh, this unit will sit flat on the bottom. So, hard part done. Let's keep it going. side of this kind of at that end where the elbow this end just slid it had uh, was just slid into that little hole down there it just pulled it out not even put a cut in it this piece of scrap I use for something okay there it is cut now here's the cool thing I'm actually gonna use the end of that tube for this cool uh, aeromotive part that comes with my pump. Let me show you what that is. So one of the uh, accessories I bought for this Phantom 340 series 
stealth in tank kit is this new job. This is what they call a valve jet siphon. And it's a little valve that bolts onto the pump and it actually uses the flow of fuel to uh, drive a little siphon valve. Here's what this uh, siphon kit looks like. So this end goes onto, this is the valve itself. It just goes in line with the fuel pump supply. And this hose plugs into that. Then the other end of the hose, you normally has a little magnet on it. You can put it at one end of the tank. If it's a saddle tank, you can put it on the other side of the saddle. Uh, but basically I'll just cut this hose to length and then simply connect this hose again to the, to that line in there and uh, put a little hose clamp on it. And then it will, uh, from this line, I'll run a 6AN line all the way to the other side of the car where the other tank is. And then this will be constantly siphoning fuel from the other side of the tank, keeping this tank full. And then I'll use a 6AN line from here to again to the top of the other tank as a overflow. So as the fuel level comes up, it'll just push fuel back over to the other side. Um, and just keep a constant uh, supply to draw fuel from that secondary tank. So that should be a pretty good uh, setup uh, for this system, fuel system. Scary part's done. Holes drilled and all the mounting holes drilled. Let's keep it going. Oh, and while I was at it, I put in the, I attached the siphon hose. That's good to go. check valves, one-way valves, little ball in there, and these go in this rubber fuel bladder. There's four of them, and I already pressed these in. Let's see in there. So anyways, that'll keep. Fuel can come in this way, but it can't go out. So we'll keep this bladder full of fuel at all times in addition with the siphon, uh, the jet siphon, it'll keep this full from the other side of the tank as well. Make sure we draw all the fuel from the, from the other tank, the other fuel tank.
All right, well, we're getting ready to install the pump hanger assembly. Figured I would show you guys what this all looks like before I get this in and sealed up. Uh, I've got the, the gasket in place. That will seal it. Um, I've got the siphon tube in place. It comes with this anti-kink spring that you gotta feed in there so that this hose doesn't kink. And again, that hose goes all the way down into there, connects to that, uh, that little tube that will connect to the other tank. Here's the hanger assembly all ready to go. This is the, the jet siphon, so that um, yellow tube will connect right there and siphon from the other side. Get the fuel pump on there with the screen. Ready to go. So let's drop this thing in there and uh, get it all hooked up and should be good to go. Just enough clearance. The studs are just low enough. Cool. That'll work. Let's see if we can take a look down in there. Go. Looks good, the bladder sitting very flat on the bottom of the tank, that's good. All right. Normally what you do with these tanks is you rivet them in place and you see the mounting tabs down here, unless it actually bolts there instead. I decided to bolt them. Two bolts down there into the frame, one bolt there, I need to actually buy some longer bolts and I'm gonna use some fender washers to distribute the load there. Uh, but this makes this tank removable. And as you can imagine, if the, with the side pod in place, that gets riveted completely to the chassis. The tank was riveted to the chassis. If I ever needed to service the fuel pump for some reason, I cannot get to it with this chassis cross member in place, because obviously this needs to lift straight up. And with this all installed in the car and with the tank permanently installed, there's no way to get it out of there. So what I'm gonna do is make this removable. So you saw the two bolts or the three bolts, three bolts holding this tank in. The secondary tank, there's no pump or anything in there. So I probably don't have to make that removable, but I'm gonna, you can see um, one bolt down there and then two bolts down there holding that in. I'm actually gonna make these removable. And what I'm gonna do is, this is the body side pod, and this goes right in front of the rear wheel, and directly behind this panel would sit the tank. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna cut out a shape, and then put a, a removable aluminum panel there, so that this becomes an access hole. So uh, in the event I ever have a problem with the fuel pump, anything inside that tank, and I need to remove the tank, 
it will require I remove the suspension once all the car is together, but that's super easy, removing the suspension. And with the suspension removed, the tank will just, I can just slide it out uh, rearward from the body panel, slide it out of its home. So that's my plan there, just to make it removable for maintenance. And that's what I'm finding with a lot of this car is, is you gotta kinda think ahead before you permanently rivet something in and think about once the car is finished, will it be accessible? Can you maintain it? Can you swap apart, replace it without having to tear the entire, entire car down to fix it? So just a little, with a little bit of forethought, uh, you can make things a lot more serviceable. The other thing I'm gonna do, speaking of serviceability, same with the front of this fiberglass side pod. You can see the underside of this, there's, it's completely enclosed. And with my airlift uh, system that's in there, the air pump, the vacuum pump, the ECU, it's all in here. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna cut an access panel out on the bottom of this so that from underside the car, I can service any of the lift electronics and components after the car is finished. And I'm actually gonna do the same thing on the driver's side. Because on the driver's side, I've got my horn, my air horn set up. So I've got the air horn pump, the two horns themselves and the lines. If I ever have to service those, again, when the car is finished, normally you can't get at that cavity area. It's completely covered up by fiberglass body paneling. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the driver's side, creating an access panel that can be accessed from underneath the car to service that cavity area if need be.